Focused, eh? Yep. So, you're on. Ready? You're on! Okay! Oh, he's waiting for you once you get on. Okay. Um, I'm going to tie the oh, Peter Briggs Wolf Spider tonight. Um, like I said, it's a it's a, just a different version of, of Leonard Fleming's uh, Wolf Spider. Um, and I first came across the pattern on uh, Tom Sutcliffe's site. Uh, he's got a lot of guys that post it, and Peter posted a little article on it. And um, he he fishes the, uh, the Berg Mountain streams quite a lot. And I'm from that area, so I thought it would be a, a nice little pattern to try out. And it's a it's a deadly pattern. Eh? It really, really is a, a great pattern. And when he says it, it sort of rivals the the, the rab in those berg streams. He's not lying. Um, battled a little bit with with the the legging material. Um, on this particular pattern, I've used a paintbrush bristles, but they they're a bit stiff. So it, I didn't get too much chance to try it out this December because was, the waters were just, just too high. It was a lot of rain. Um, Peter ties it with a with a pheasant tail. And uh, I tied it with pheasant tail originally, and it it just seems a bit uh, you know it's a bit soft, so you can't f fish in too much fast water. It's, it's more of a, a slow water uh, type fly. Although having said that, fishing pocket waters, you know, short cast, that sort of thing, it, it really does work, letting it sort of drift over the, the edges of, of the tails and that sort of stuff. Um, just with the the pheasant tail tends to because it's, it's so soft, it, it folds back on itself. So you want to fish it in sort of more gentle glides. We tried. Coating it with a bit of UV resin and, and you know trying to stiffen it up a bit, but then it becomes brittle. So we're still working on it uh, uh, you know, to try to find the, the right material. Gary and I are going to try with a with a bit of wildebeest um, mane. Um, that's going to be a little bit more stiff, a little bit more robust, but then you know not as stiff as as these paintbrush, paintbrush bristles are. Um, other than that, uh, sizes are generally tied in a size 16. Uh, Peter ties it a little bit bigger. Um, 14s, but tonight we'll we'll tie it on a 12, just so that uh, the visually impaired can well, can get so a little much. bit better. <laughs> right. It's a very simple flight to tie. It's quick. Um, it's you know three, four materials. Uh, we're going to tie it on a. I haven't tied on on one of these hooks before, but it's it's not a bad hook. You, you really want to hook with a nice big gape when you tie this flight because of the legs. You know, it's uh, the the rab is generally a little bit softer, so you know when a fish hits it, it you know, the material folds on itself. Where these are a little bit stiffer, so you want a bigger gape. So if the fish hits it, there's more hook to to get stuck in his mouth. It's a I generally use um it's it, it's actually called a spider hook. Funny enough, it's on uh, I, I get the the hook from African fly angler. Uh, I think it's I don't know if it's an Allen. I'm, I'm not sure to be honest. Um, Yes, yeah, it's it's quite a short shank with a with a nice wire gap, and and it's a little bit offset as well, which helps a lot as well. That's the fly, that's the hook that I generally tied on. I think Peter ties it on a on a grip yell. Um, yes, on the on the on the clink hammer style hook. Yeah. Yeah. So so this hook is is similar. You know, it's 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 not a bad not a bad choice. This is okay. This is a lot bigger than what I would generally tie it, um, but. Again, the fish don't seem to really mind too much about the size. It's a great searching pattern. You know, it's a, it's a really, it's got a really big profile on the water, so you know, it sits there, it creates quite a big shadow. You can skate it around, you can move it, and the, it pulls fish from all over the place. It really is a great fly. Right. Okay. First of all, it's just a you know, stock standard thread base. With this hook we'll, we'll go up to to that bend over there which would be generally the same as what you'd do on on any any other style hook that you would tie it on. Foam generally again you know you would have it you know on this little pattern you want it sort of about the gape of the hook but now this is quite a big gape so it's, it's not going to be obviously as big. You want it just to, to create a bit of a profile Again, Peter ties it with quite a big uh, abdomen. It, it, it really is quite big. But if you look at the wolf spider in, in the rivers, they actually got quite a narrow abdomen and then quite a chunky thorax. Um, so, but again, the fish don't really mind. It's, it's more the profile in the water that they're looking for.
Okay, so you're going to tie in just a bit of foam at the back there. You want to take it too far forward. What we're going to do is we're going to build up a little bit of uh, dubbing underneath that to create that that abdomen, and we're going to pull the foam the foam over it, and then tie it off about halfway on the shank because you want to leave yourself enough space for your post, your hackle, and your, and your legs. You know, don't you don't want to overcrowd yourself in the front. Dubbing um, again, a matter of choice. It's if you want to put something shiny in there, um, you can. It doesn't again doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, what we, we like, I like this uh, the Spectra dub. Um, I think we get it from Hens, eh, Gary? Where's Gary? Not sure. Yeah, it's it's a I think it's a Hens product. Um, it's an awesome dubbing. You don't have to use any any sort of dry fly dubbing. Um, I mean, the foam the foam and the hackle is enough to keep this fly afloat anyway. So don't worry about about using a any specific sort of dry fly uh, dubbing. Just build up a little bit of a, a bit of an admin that you're going to pull the foam over. Yeah, this is, well, it's a little bit lighter than the peacock. It's, I think it's one shade sort of lighter than the peacock. Yeah. Um, this is actually quite a nice color foam. I, I generally tie it on, on the slightly lighter foam. But again, uh, uh, that's more just for, for us to look at. It looks nice in the box. No, no. It, you, it, it sits very, very low in the water. So you're looking at the post. I mean, it, it's a very, very low riding fly. Um, and don't be afraid if, if it sinks. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you'll often get fish. When, when this thing's tumbling, when you put in a bit of white water and it, and it tumbles through a bit of white water, fish will still come in and hit it underwater. You know? So it's a, it, works, it works well as a, as a sunken pattern as well. Okay, so you're going to pull your, your foam over to create that, that abdomen. And you can just cut that, that tag off. No, you want it. You want it because it's gonna. Yeah, if you if you pull it, yeah, if you pull it quite tight, then you, you squash the foam, and then it loses its floatability. So you, you don't want to pull it too tight. Just pull it over. So you know, if you look really closely, there's going to be a little bit of a gap there. And the smaller patterns, it gets quite difficult to do that. So uh, you know, the, the bigger pattern, it looks it looks a lot bigger than what it is. But on the smaller patterns, it won't obviously look as sort of pronounced. Yes. Make a suggestion or something. You know? Yes. When you take the foam over, you cut it off. Mm. Why not keep it for the post? You could do that. Uh, just the, the, the color. It's the color of the post. It's so, so wide. The fish are not going to mind it. No, 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 no. No, it's for it's for you to see. So if you like, this is quite a quite a. I'm a I'm a pink and orange at this stage. Yeah. Look, Charlie. Like the 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 color the because it's a quite a low riding fly, um, and the the foam that you generally tie on is is quite a dull color. It's you know it's it's a black. Well, no particular reason. You could tie it with a bright colour if you really wanted to. Yeah, I've just never tried that. I've just tied it. The fish is actually not going to see it. But Probably not. Tight. Well, if it's tumbling, yeah. But it, it's, it, it's, it's up to the tyre. No, sure, it's up to the tyre. Okay, at this point, if you didn't cut off the foam, you'd make it the post. But um, we'll, we'll, put a, we'll put a post in here. Uh, I'm on the same wavelength as... As Herman, my eyes aren't, aren't too hot, so I like to use sort of fairly bright uh, posts. I know Dan is, is dead against it, um, but yeah. So just a bit of Antron. No, just just winding up the post to, to just stiffen the post up a bit. Because what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put a bit of hackle on there and it's, we're going to parachute it around around the top. Is it 
Is that deliberate? The post is not next to the body? Yeah. Yes. So there's a gap there. Yes, yeah. What we're going to do is you need to leave a little bit of space behind there because you're going to tie on your legs at the back and, and facing the front in the in behind between the foam and the post. Okay. Okay, and then from there we just select a, a bit of dry fly hackle. Colour not overly important again, because um, generally on the smaller flies you don't really, you know, you don't really notice a, a, a grizzly over a, a sort of tan colour. But in the bigger one, we got to, you'll go with the same sort of colour as, as the foam, just to keep it all sort of the same. I'm just stripping the flu off the, off the fly. I'm sure they know that, Charlie. <laughs> well, my daughter's sitting there. I suppose she's still in time. Okay, try to get it so uh, you've got the shiny side on the top. Um, the feathers have a, a, a natural curve to them, so it just helps with the parachuting of the fly. It'll help it float a little bit better. Wind that up the post and then back down again. Okay, you can fill up a little, just a little bit of dubbing in between there. Okay. Now, the legs is, you know, again, it's been, I've, I've played around with it a bit. Um, and what I think, you know, what I've noticed on, on some of Peter, Peter's flies is that he's, he's tied them all at the back and, you know, split them, split them around. And that, when you're fishing it, when it's drifting, tends to push the flies, the, the legs back quite a lot. So the, for the front legs, you're going to take two strands of, of pheasant tail. And you're going to tie it in facing up the shank. So it's going to look just like, you know, it's going to push up directly up the, up the shank. So when it's, when it's washed pudding, uh, when the water's pushing, it's going to, you know, open the legs up a bit. It's not going to splay too far back and it's going to give it that nice profile. What you can do is... You can leave, you can leave the the butt section on on a ready. This is you got your back legs on there waiting to go ready. I generally don't I, on the smaller flies. That's still a bit thick for for the back legs, so I cut it off and I and I do just another set of uh, legs facing backwards. Um, we'll do that now as well. Just cut that excess off. And then the same out the front. On the other side. Just pull it to the same length. Lengthwise, you, you know, it's it's not overly important uh, the profile. You don't want it to be, you know, too big. But and and uh, you know, you don't want the legs to be pushing out the front the same length as a hackle. You know, you, you want it to give it a, a a nice halo, very much like the rab is. You, you know, you get you get a nice halo. So, not overly important about the length of the legs. Maybe I don't know. Probably that looks about three or four times the, the length of the shank. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just having a look at it myself here. Can I turn the camera over? No, 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 it's fine. Can you see the front there? Is that better? 
like that. But you'll see when we get towards the front there, I'll split those legs and they'll, they'll open up a bit. Okay, with the back legs, because generally, you know, your tippet's going to be pulling the fly from the front. You want them to be, you know, you don't, you don't want them to be pushed back too much. So you want, want them more splayed out than, than the front legs. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tie it across the shank of the hook. So it's going to keep the, you know, if I go like this, it's going to keep the, the legs out sort of like that. So in the box it might not look as pretty, but when it's in the water with the water pushing it, it's going to open them up quite nicely. Give it two wraps, get it to the length. Your back legs a little bit shorter than your front legs. And then you can, the back legs you can kind of just work and they'll open up by themselves. Again, another two. Trap it in there. Try to get them the same length. Just trim off the axis. Excess. Yeah. Don't want to slip when you that far that far down. <laughs> Okay, again, you can just work them out. Okay. Just fill up a little bit of that space with a bit of dubbing. And you want to come in front of the post. Just enough so that you're covering up your your thread. Okay. Make sure your thread's now you're in the front here. Okay. Yes, these aren't going to work. Okay, what we're going to do is now just hackle it forward as you would no a normal parach parachute around the post. And we're going to finish it in front of the fly, in front of the, the legs in the front there. Two or three turns, again, it's more for the profile than anything else. The foam is what's going to give it its flexibility. If you had a set of gallows, would that be helpful? No, not particularly. Okay, so you're going to pull your hackle down the front. Don't worry about neatness, you can trim it off later. Trim that a little bit off. Okay, and we'll finish off, and that's it. Can you stop there and just trim it? I can. Yeah, no, I've got to. No, you'll see it splits and there's a Charlie. <laughs> Just move that out the way. 
Oh, Gary. Have you tried squirrel tail yet? Um, it's just it's e it's even softer than than the a little bit more durable, but it's it's softer than the than the pheasant. Yeah. Um, no. Right, and that's that. We'll trim it off. A what? Cheese. Yeah, that's it. Okay, the legs not splitting, but it would in the water. Okay, and that's and that's it. Very simple. The balls aren't quite great. But yeah, very very simple, very quick flight to tie when you get used to it. And you're not still sitting in front of 40 people. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.